I designed this grocery bag holder to be modern, functional, and beautiful. The intricate design will have you wanting to put it somewhere on display rather than hiding it away in the pantry, and it is surprisingly very easy to create. Stay tuned for a full list of supplies to the description box below. Begin by taking your hair elastic and slightly stretching it out. You don't want it to be too stretchy, but you don't want it to be too stiff either. Now you will make a slip stitch into the elastic. Chain one, and begin placing 40 half double crochet inside the ring. Continue placing half double crochet all the way inside the ring until you reach 40. When you're done, it should lay flat. There shouldn't be any ruffling. Now you will slip stitch into the top of your first half double crochet. Chain two and place one double crochet in the same stitch as joining. Place one double crochet in the next two stitches. Now you will place two double crochet in the next stitch. You see here I did three double crochet and then I increased. We are going to continue making three double crochet and then an increase. So continue in the stitch pattern all the way around. Make three double crochet and then increase on the fourth stitch. When you are done, you should have 50 double crochet. Now this will slightly ruffle because we increased, but it won't show later. Now you're going to skip over your beginning chain two and slip stitch into your first double crochet. Now we're gonna chain two and place one double crochet in the same stitch and in each stitch around. Your beginning chain two does not count as a stitch. So continue placing one double crochet to the end. We're at the end, so we're gonna skip over the chain two and slip stitch into the top of the very first double crochet. And we're going to chain two and repeat the last round. So just place one double crochet in each stitch around. Be sure to count your stitches and make sure that you only have 50 double crochet. It's very important for this particular pattern to work. When you get to the end, skip over the chain two and slip stitch into the first double crochet made. Now we're going to begin our stitch pattern. Chain nine to begin our stitch pattern. This chain nine will count as one treble, chain five. Now we're going to make one treble crochet in the same exact stitch. It will look like a V-stitch. Now we're going to chain three and skip four. Make a single crochet in the fifth stitch. Chain three, skip four. Make 
a treble crochet a chain five and a treble crochet in the same stitch from here on i will refer to this as a v stitch Now you will chain three, skip four, make a single crochet in the fifth stitch. This is what it should be looking like. Chain three, skip four, make a V stitch. Again, a V stitch is a treble crochet, chain five, and another treble crochet in the same stitch. Now you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. Make a V stitch, chain three, single crochet, chain three, V stitch. And there will be four stitches in between each one. chain three, skip four, make a v-stitch. Chain three, skip four, make a single crochet. Chain three, Skip four, make a V stitch. Chain three, skip four, make a single crochet. Chain three, skip four. Now you should be back at the beginning, chain nine. Count up to your fourth chain. Slip stitch into the fourth chain. For the next round, our stitches need to be coming out of the center of the V stitch here. So I'm going to slip stitch in the next two chains to make that possible. Now you're going to chain one and place a single crochet in that chain five space. As you can see, it looks like it comes out of the center of the chain five space. Chain three. Place a V stitch in the top of the next single crochet. Chain three, place a single crochet in the top of the V stitch in the chain five space. Chain three, place a V stitch in the next single crochet. This is what it should look like. 
V-stitch in every single crochet and a single crochet in every chain 5 space of the V-stitch below, separated by chain 3s. Chain 3, place a single crochet in the top of the V-stitch. Chain 3, place a V-stitch in the top of the next single crochet. You should be seeing a pattern here. You're going to repeat this pattern all the way around till you get to the beginning single crochet. When you do, chain three and slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet of the round. This is what it should look like. Now we're going back to our chain nine. Place one treble crochet in the top of the same stitch. This will count as a V-stitch. Chain three, place a single crochet in the top of the next V-stitch. Chain three, place a V-stitch in the top of the single crochet. This is what it should look like. Chain three, place a single crochet in the top of the next V-stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way around. Chain three, place a V-stitch in the next single crochet, and then chain three and place a single crochet in the next V-stitch. You should be alternating V-stitches and single crochet. So there's the V-stitch, there's the single crochet, and they're separated by a chain three spaces. Here we are where we began. At the beginning chain nine space, I've chained three. And now you will count up four stitches and slip stitch into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chains. Now you will chain one and place a single crochet in that same space. So you should see a pattern here. You're just going to keep repeating the last two rows all the way until it measures about 22 inches or until it measures the length that you want. I did a total of 24 rounds. You just want to be sure that you end on a round six repeat. So here I have gotten my 24 rounds and I've ended on a round six repeat. So you will chain one and place a single crochet in the same stitch. You will place two single crochet in the next chain space. Place a single crochet in the top of the next treble. Place three single crochet in the next chain five space. Place one single crochet in the top of the next treble. Place two single crochet in the next chain space. 
Place one single crochet in the top of the next stitch. Two single crochet in the next chain three space. One single crochet in the top of the next treble. Three single crochet in the chain five space. One single crochet in the top of the next treble. Two single crochet in the next chain three space. You should see a pattern here. Essentially, I am placing a single crochet in the top of every single crochet and treble, and I'm placing two single crochet in every chain three space. and three single crochet in every chain five space. So you should have 50 single crochet in this round, just like you have 50 double crochet in that last round. When you're done, slip stitch into the top of your first single crochet and chain one. Place one half double crochet in the same space and in every stitch around. You should have 50 half double crochet whenever you are done with this round. Slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet. Chain one. Place one half double crochet in the first stitch and in every stitch around till you get to the end. You again should have only 50 half double crochet. When you get to the end, don't slip stitch yet. We're going to chain 12. This will be what we use to hang it up. If you need a bigger loop, then just simply chain more. Slip stitch into the top of the very last half double crochet you made, and then also into the first half double crochet of the round. Chain one and single crochet in that first stitch and in each stitch until you reach the chain 12 space. When you reach the chain 12 space, be sure you put a single crochet in that last half double, and then you're gonna put one single crochet for every chain that you made. So I'm going to place 12 single crochet in that chain space. Now you will slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet you made and fasten off, leaving a length of tail of about six to eight inches. Grab your yarn needle and place it on your leftover tail. Watch me carefully here. This is how I do it to save time. You're welcome to wrap it with just a single strand, but to me this is faster. Now we are going to make a tassel. Cut a length of yarn about eight inches and then count in 25 stitches from your chain 12 loop. That would be the middle or the center of the front of your bag. Go down to the middle row. Grab your length of yarn and attach it to the bag holder as if it were a fringe on a blanket. Thread your yarn needle through both tails and place your bead on both tails. 
Open the ends of your fringe. Now we are going to make the tassel. I simply wrap my fingers about 20 times. If you are needing to wrap a piece of cardboard, it's about four inches. You can wrap it as many times as you would like. Open the tails of the yarn that acted as fringe and place your tassel tails inside, tightly tying it into a knot to secure it in place. Now we're going to cut a length of yarn about six inches long and we're going to use it to tie around the top of the tassel to keep the tassel tails together from going wild. This is the way that I do it. You can do it any way you would like. I take a yarn needle and hide these tails down inside the tassel since they tend to pop out. Now you simply cut the tassel tails to where they are all about the same length. Your boho bag saver is now complete. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.